What's the purpose of wrestling? My approach as coaching is my job is to try to help kids find their success. And success is something different for every kid. I mean, ultimately, the goal in wrestling is to get your hand raised. I mean, and really, that's really the goal in any aspect of life. If you weren't successful in your line of work, what would you be? Yeah. Pete, if you, if you weren't successful in selling mortgages, you, you wouldn't be able to provide for your family. Ideally, you try to use wrestling to, you know, to instill the work, you know, the values and, and, and find every kid's individual success and help them figure out how they can be successful. I mean, winning is a cornerstone, like, and that's because that's the one way you can measure success. It just is that you don't measure the same way with every kid. So I've been able to kind of use that with my own kids that, you know, gauge where they're at and, and where they should be and, and try to use that to, you know, and I know as they got better and better, we, we put the foot to the gas a little bit, but ultimately it's when, when they're not successful. Guys, before we get started, just want to let you know, if you have any questions for us, please click the link below. You could ask us any questions via email, and we'll get back to you by the end of the episode. All right, guys, we're here for episode 28. We have very special guests with us, Dave Porta, head coach of Shore Regional, awesome dad, awesome guy, somehow still finds ways to coach youth sports, even though he's a full-time head coach, teacher, coaches two sports? Uh, wrestling and softball. Yeah. And he's an amazing guy, and we're so thrilled to have him here. So thanks for joining us, Dave. Appreciate coming. I uh, I start coaching um, usually Thanksgiving weekend. I tell my wife, I kiss her goodbye. Yeah. Thanksgiving, I'll see you again Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> yep, hundred so, percent. You know, it's nice to be home on spring break and have a chance to you know be with the family and help you guys out today. Absolutely, dude. We're excited to have you. Now, I've gotten to watch you a little bit from a distance in the beginning, but now we've gotten really friendly. Our boys are always together, and it's admirable. I know we've talked that you feel like you've missed some things, but I got to tell you from the outside looking in, Dave, you always show up. In your mind, it might not be enough, but I'm telling you, you make it work pretty well. I mean, as busy of a workload as you have and as much time as you have dedicated to coaching at the high school level, I mean, I see you show up for Parker. I see you show up for Jack. I just watched you this weekend coach both boys through War at the Shore. And I got to give you credit where credit's due. You make it work and you find a balance. I, it's... Definitely not easy. I think, you know, over the course of my, you know, coaching career, I've been able to reprioritize. Um, I mean, always family's number one. But, uh, you know, as my kids are getting into it, I don't want to really give up what I have yet. Um, but at the same time, I, and I, and I'm able to contribute to kind of their own success by being part of wrestling yeah. still. Um, but it's, you know, trying to find a balance there and, you know, using any little bit of free time I can to give back to them and, and, and not only just them, but even just the community that, you know, and, and their friends in, in wrestling. Well, you give back yeah. to a lot of the kids. I mean, we spent a bunch of Sundays together bouncing back and forth at mm -hmm. tournaments. And if a kid needed a coach on the mat, you were right there. Okay. Without hesitation, you stepped up. It didn't matter who it was. I tell you, it's it's that community mindset in wrestling. Yeah. And, you know, not that any of the sport isn't that way, but that's just kind of how we see it. It's, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah. And you've made that clear, too, you know, how, how much you like the little group that we've built, you know, yeah. traveling to tournaments together and being there to support each other. And I realized the value in that talking to Petey, what, you know, what we have. It's nice that my boy gets to go through this with his friends yeah. and I get to enjoy the company of their parents. You know, listen, uh, I don't like a lot of people mm -hmm. just because I'm like, I'm self-sufficient on my own. I'm shy maybe, but I like you guys. I enjoy all the parents that were around consistently. I've genuinely grown fond of them. And you know I what? Mean, you talk about them on a weekly basis. I do. You know? I'll always talk Which about the special. Porters. They have, <clears throat> they have a very positive impact on me as a parent Maybe without Dave realizing, he sets a great example. He sure does. He's very mild. He, I think, does an amazing job with his boys. Your wife contributes great. You guys have a great balance. Yeah. And uh, it's admirable. Just so you know where I'm at, a little bit of a fan. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I kind of look at it like, like you know, uh, when your kid's growing up, like, who are, who are your go-to guys, like, as a 10-year-old kid? Mm. Your go-to guys are the kids that live on your street right. or the kids that are in your classroom. Right. Um, like th those are your boys. Like even if you know nine year old Billy around yeah. the block smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, <laughs> like maybe he's your not, guy. He's close. He's still, yeah. he's close like, proximity. He knows if something goes down, like you know he's Billy's coming, coming yeah. to get your back. Mm -hmm. and, and so those like whether you you know you like it or not, th that's that's your family. Like that's you know that's your neighborhood. There you look out for each other, and, and kind of like it comes full circle. Like now his dads. I look at it like, you know, the kids like that my kids play sports with, like, 
in turn, like I'm friends with their dads now, whether yeah. I like them or not, like that's who my kids hang out with. So that's who like we're, we're going to look after. And it's, right. it's so much nicer when you get along with them, when they are good people. It's easier not to have to fake and it. And even if it was like 35, 36 year old Billy smoking a pack of cigarettes, you know, it's still, he's my boy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, you know, no I, judgment. I, we have each other's back and it's so much better that we all get along. But like, it's, you know, our kids even still now hang out with the kids on the block in their classroom. Yeah. So it's great when they go through sports together and you get along with the dads. Cause really like my, my core friends now are the dads of my kids Yeah. Um, that we, that I see at every sporting event at baseball games, at football well, that's games. That's you're spending right. most of your time with, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, we just spent and it, the weekend in Wildwood. We were on the boardwalk. We were at the lunch. Max was talking about Mudhen today. It was the best lunch yeah. he's ever had, if you ask him. It, it's nice. My, my kid was excited to go to wrestling, but he was more excited that his best friend was coming to watch him wrestle. Yeah. There you like, go. And, that, and there's a little bit of perspective there. Like, we, we kind of look at it like this big, this is a big wrestling tournament. Are you ready? Are you? Uh -huh. And he's thinking, well, I'm just, I'm just excited that my friend's coming to watch me, and then I, I get that. to hang out with him at the arcade afterwards. I love that Parker didn't expect Max to show up to watch. No, you know what? He's... That, that was foreign to him. Like, my, my son Parker, he's in yeah. fifth grade, and he kind of is going through wrestling, not isolated, but, like, all his wrestling partners and all his wrestling friends are a little bit older. Mm -hmm. And and then for Jack, like, everybody that he does sports with, they're all the same grade yeah. as him, and they yeah. all play football together, and they all wrestle together. And there's just a different camaraderie there where they kind of, like, they rally behind each other. And my, yeah. my son Parker, he has that with his friends, but he didn't have it to the same degree. Right. So he was probably shocked because he probably never had, uh, he gets a lot of cousin support, I know that, yeah. but he probably never had a buddy no. show up and watch him like that. So he's like, oh my God, your friend's here? Yeah. Like, that's amazing. You know how we are. We're big I know, on it's support. Amazing. It's you know, amazing. You were talking about coming to the half marathon Saturday. Mm -hmm. We're coming. Just the fact that that's on your radar, but dude, I told that's Dave, amazing. Like, if I care about you, I'm, I'm going to show up. So like, if you open a power that. washing company, I'm going to try and use you. If you're running a half marathon, I'm coming if I can make it work. And I'm that's tired, when I, dog. My ah, legs gonna be tired ah, too. Yeah, but you're gonna do it. Yeah. And either way, whether you finish or you don't, oh, I'm I'll finishing. Come, but if you need, I'll come out and I'll try and carry you. We'll walk. We ain't running. We but, get some buddy carries. But at I the got end. you. <laughs> but I've tried to instill that value not so much into my girls yet because they're young at two and four. But Max understands those values. So like Thursday night. He found out I, I was free Friday morning. We were initially going to leave Friday to come down and watch Saturday and hope that everybody made it. Thursday night, we got to leave. We got to go see Jack. We could see Jack on Friday. We're, we're going tonight. Mm -hmm. We left Thursday night. That's it was awesome. that important for him to show up for his boy. Good. See what you're instilling in him? And so he's got that same. For me, that's a proud dad moment. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. It's amazing. Dave and I spent a lot of time coaching together, and I was always blown away because at the time— uh, that must have been, what, four years ago, I guess, by now. You know, like, I was feeling tired as a coach. I'm not sure if I was still with the Rebels or if I had Little Sharks going on, but I had a lot of coaching, too. And then, you know, Dave would be the head coach. And I'm like, dude, did you guys have a, did you guys have practice today? He's like, yeah. I just came right here. I'm like, oh. Oh my God! But Johnny Post you is doing that similar now yep. too. Yeah, which is nice to see. He he always pops up in the room as soon as he's done and shows up for Noah. And yeah. it's for my kid to be able to be in a room with a parent like Dave that's as dedicated as he is to come from a high school varsity mm -hmm. practice to come make sure that the kids are getting the best out of what they can. Now he's their first son, but yeah. he's helping everybody. Yeah. And just him being in the room for me provides an air of confidence and a calming factor. Like Definitely. I'll be honest, some of these tournaments, I'm kind of new to youth wrestling or not kind. I am new to youth wrestling, especially being at a tournament, having people that can navigate properly it's huge. It's huge not, for me. It's definitely not easy. And a lot of it I figure out on the fly myself. You do a good job. But, and even coming to these practices, I feel like if I don't come high energy, it's, you know, the kids kind of feed off the energy we bring yeah. as adults. A hundred percent. I've been saying that for a long time, that as a coach, they feed off your energy. We drove back from Virginia yesterday. It was a four and a half hour trip. The tablets actually saved the ride, oh, which I was bet. nice. And it was yeah. hilarious. Carter and Rowan both looked like NASCAR, like they were at a NASCAR event with the headphones. Mason looked like an offensive coordinator because he, he brought his uh, Xbox headset. They all had the tablets, but it was, it was tiring. It was draining. Yeah. So I got to our first Tuesday night practice at the PAL, and I, I, I just felt I didn't have the same energy. Like I was just feeling not – like when I got in the room and rolled the mats out, like – you I, I was yourself. fine. I was fine. Prior to that, I was like, oh, shit. Like, come on. You got to wake up, man. You got to wake up. Like, these kids are, you know, these kids need to feel your vibe. Yeah. And, like, I've been on the adverse end of that where 
the coaches didn't have that good vibe. And it's contagious. Yeah. It's contagious. So I could see that my good energy translate with the kids and gets them hyped. But if I'm, you know, exhausted, which we mm-hmm. are, you know, we're exhausted. We show up to practice, shoulders kind of shrugging like we don't want to be there. The kids are going to have that same They're energy. They're following you, yeah. So, so, Dave, you're so right. And then you show up with a game plan, and a lot of times it just doesn't work out, and you got to be able to Audible. adjust on the fly. Yep. Uh, yep. You know, especially you kind of gauge what the, the energy level maybe is too high or it's too low. And yeah. Yeah, but that's life in general, The worst too. thing you can do is watch the clock and just wait for the clock to drag on. Like, you gotta, uh-huh. you want to try to make the time meaningful. You're right. You're now, right. have you always been like that and always had that outlook? I feel like I've developed it over time. Uh, I mean, I started coaching wrestling 20 years ago. And, and it was it was such a different game back then. Mm. I mean, I remember when I started coaching, we would have three-hour practices. And I don't know how I did it, but that's just kind of how it was. Like, we would run them, we would lift, we would wrestle. Yep. And, and kind of as, I mean, wrestling's evolved. All sports have evolved. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like over the past, you know, 10, 15 years or so, kids are just into, you know, multiple things now. And, and I feel like I have to really maximize my time with them. And not, not only for the kids, but also for myself. Like, I can't be doing three-hour practices and then not, not seeing my own kids at all. 100%. So I've been able to develop and really, to become a successful in anything, I've surrounded myself with good people. I got to take this. Good, I'm so huge. sorry. I just have to step away for one second. Yeah, I apologize. Fine, edit. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely have great people over there. It's hot. Keep them hot. We'll keep them hot. Oh shit! We're Let's go. Evan? Until Billy gets back. All right, that's awesome, dude. That's that works. Up, dude. Okay, so surround yourself by good people over there. I've surrounded myself with good wrestling coaches that I know can can fill in fill in the gaps here and help me be efficient yeah. to condense what I used to do in three hours into like an hour and a half or so. Yes. Be, I mean, and the kids, I think, appreciate that more. And it just really, it's a lot more planning. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot more trying to be efficient to maximize their time. 100%. And, and I've been fortunate to come across good wrestling coaches and just good people. Yeah. And, and when I look for, you know, someone to help my team or to help me coach, I, I really look less for who's good at wrestling and more like who's a good person to bring around my team. And I've had some good guys like Sean Dine, Jason yep. Colavita. Yeah. Um, Len Forces, and, and even right now, I got a, a, a young, uh, a young buck, uh, yeah. a former How guy, Luke Eckloff. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. And he's someone that I kind of feel, you know, he's a little protege of mine that that's I'm awesome. training to, to take over one day. That's beautiful. But someone that doesn't see themselves as a wrestling coach, more of a coach of kids, you know. Yeah, that's such a great mindset as a head coach because, mm-hmm. unfortunately, as the sport has evolved, some of those guys that have been around since the '90s, they have that same like "this is my thing" mm-hmm. type approach, and. That's not really sustainable for that individual's family or the program overall. You know, delegate and elevate. So the fact that you don't have ego and and you understand your strengths and weaknesses and even those three-hour blocks, like that was back in like the early 2000s when we were practicing. It was that same thing. It was that that grind, that three hours. Mm -hmm. So the bell rang at Frio Township at three Mm -hmm. and, you know, mom's picking me up at 645. Day in and day out. How much energy do I even have by Saturday morning? You know, no, especially if I'm cutting weight on top of that. Kids, kids are different now. Yeah, they I are. mean, they, they just, it was hard to retain kids you got out of the hallway yeah. for a sport that, that, you know, would be a grind for them as it, it was so anyway, much. let alone for three or four hours of their time every night. Like those, it was hard retaining kids. For sure. And I felt like I really had to maximize their time a bunch. Absolutely. So I, I consolidated and, you know, I found out. It wasn't really compromising, you know, the output and, and the results at all. So right. it I'm just sure, made me be more efficient. I'm pretty sure Penn State only does like 45 minute to an hour practice. I keep using them as a comparison, yeah. dude. Yeah. I keep using them as an example all the time. I was just talking about them last night at practice. Mm-hmm. And they have found a sustainable, joyful approach to the sport. Yeah. And they have immense hardware. I, I mean, what's it been, 12, 13 titles? The yeah. one thing they have that we don't, I don't have that I don't think anybody else around here has. They have championship level wrestlers coming in already. 100%. Like we're de- still, we're they, trying to develop. But they got the blueprint. Yeah. You know? I apologize, guys. That was uh, called by my dad. I just I had to step out and Is take everything it. all right? Because we heard you from out. Yeah, he had surgery yesterday. Okay. So he. Um, were you talking to a doctor or something? Well, no, that was my buddy, but oh, I, okay. he needed an update on my dad. He's been around my dad for a yeah. long time, and I just wanted to make sure I didn't ignore the call, but he's good now. So, all right, but he's good now. Tyler needed something from work, and I just. Wasn't available, you're fine, so dude. you're fine. Evan jumped in. We didn't even get to talk about the All fact good. that Dave was Evan's babysitter, but we'll get there. <laughs> well, Ev, come back. Um, <laughs> but so. I was gonna say, last week we had Lex sitting right here, and Goody was his head coach at Rutgers. Have you learned anything as a head coach from Goody from your time at Jackson? Were you with him at so your time there? So it's or? funny. So I didn't start wrestling until I was a freshman in high school. Okay. 
And I started wrestling because I was playing football. Okay. And Coach Godell was my freshman football coach. Nice. And one day in practice, and it, it was still late summer, um, I just, I went to tackle someone. It was, apparently it was a double leg takedown. He saw I, it, yeah. I didn't, and he was like, you got to wrestle. And I'm like, all right. Like, you know, I found a couple of my friends wrestled. I'll try it out. Mm -hmm. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but I stuck it through and, and you know, I, ha I had good friends. Like I, like I've always found that if you're surrounded by good people, whether you choose to you know, be around them or not, you yeah. know, hopefully you gravitate to the good people. They look out for you, look out for them and good things will happen. And I, I was just, I had a good group of friends nice. and we had a good class at Jackson. So I can't say there's anything, you know, individually that I learned from Goody. Yeah. Had great energy though, but the one like, I, I could see that from the other side yeah. of the gym when we'd compete against them yeah. or going to watch them at a home match. Like his, he had that contagious energy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's like that in football too. Uh, he was like the, in everything he approached. I know. And it, Everybody it, speaks really highly of him. Everybody I've ever heard discuss him. I've had I've had no bad experiences. I yeah. mean, he is passionate about whatever he does. Yep. And, and like he said, it, it kind of, you know, that kind of energy rubs off on people. Yeah, yeah, it filters down. I mean, you've always said kids are like a mirror when you're in front of them. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're crazy, they're going to be crazy, whether you're a coach yeah. or, yeah. you know, a parent. Yeah, I mean, it was no accident that Jackson Memorial had that immense success. And yeah. he had a lot to do with that. You know, a, a lot of the kids in town, like, you know, you took them off the football field. You know, That's it's how not you like these kids were, though, right? I mean, it's not I'm like sure these kids were five over there. It's yeah. harder to do now. Yeah. Because the it, it wrestling is. starts when you're five, six years old now yeah. to really be successful. Right. You have to be an athlete to pull someone out of the out of the hallways. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the one one of the most, you know, um glorious things as a coach is when you're able to get that kid oh, yeah. out of the hallway and really just from from start to finish, see them through it and, and to help them find their success. Oh yeah. We had a kid uh years ago at Howell, his name was Xavier Kelly. Mm -hmm. And he started wrestling as a freshman. He was he was wrestling in A C twice. I mean, the kid really? was just a freak. He was a freak, you know, but he was very coachable. He, he, you know, he had his own wheelhouse. He had, like, this crazy grip strength. He was super athletic. But now you I ended up running into him at the wall tournament, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. His girlfriend... His girlfriend's brother wrestles for Predator, so I, I got to see him, and it just came full circle. I'm like, dude, get down here, bro. Get in the corner, dude. You know what's going on. It's tough finding that balance, though. Like, yeah. you don't want to burn the kid out, right? Mm -hmm. That starts at five. Right. So, like, I think you do a great job of keeping it really light, especially for Jack. I don't know what you do with Parker, but you keep it light and fun. You're not so focused on you got to be first. You, you know, you got to win. It's You're incredible there? how different your kids are too. Like, oh yeah. yeah. However, Jack you wants approach to win one too, though. Like, yeah, but know, Dave like, doesn't put, his put foot that on the pressure gas on a little him. bit more with Jack yeah. than yeah. he did with Parker. But you don't put that pressure on him like right. that. Like I see parents like, bro. There was a kid coming off the mat right before Johnny's son JP's match, that was screaming, crying, and the dad was right behind him screaming at him. Mm. Like, bro, what are you that doing? The kid's going through it. Maybe the kid was eight. Yeah. Like the kid's going through it. Hey, you need to make it worse while he's walking away, throwing his headgear, screaming and crying. Yeah. Like, just calm down. Be a little bit of a comfort. You know, like, and you do a good job of that. I mean, I, I've had, I guess, 20 years of experience in trying to reflect on, True. like, what is, the, what's the purpose of wrestling? And it's really, mm. I, my approach as coaching is my job is to try to help kids find their success. Yeah. And success is something different for every kid. I mean, ultimately, the goal in wrestling is to get your hand raised. I mean, and really, that's really the goal in any aspect of life. I mean, if, if you weren't successful in your line of work, yep. what would you be? Yeah. Unemployed, mm. right? If you weren't, if you're, Pete, if you, if you weren't successful in selling mortgages, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't be able to provide for your family. So we, I, ideally, you try to use wrestling to, you know, to instill the work, you know, the values and, and, and find every kid's individual success and help them figure out how they can be successful. Sure. I mean, winning is a cornerstone, like, and that's, cause that's the one way you can measure success. It just isn't, you don't measure it the same way with every kid. Right. So I've been able to kind of use that with my own kids that, you know gauge where they're at and where they should be and try to use that to, you know, and I know as they got better and better, we, we put the foot to the gas a little bit, but ultimately it's when they're not successful, they're dealing with it internally. A hundred percent. I mean, to, to, for me to, you know, and I'll give a little feedback and then I'll try to remind myself like now is not the time. There you go. You know, I'll tell my son, like, you can't rest on bottom. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. We'll figure it out later. Exactly. You know? Um, but that reminds me, Frankie Edgar was sitting here and he said that he'll say to his kids, it's not about winning. It's about wanting and trying to win. And that really resonated with me. And especially these young people now, they think that they just have to win, win, win. And, and I've been saying for a long time that the real wins come off the mat. Mm -hmm. The real wins come when you're 25 years old and now you're out in the workforce yeah. and you're looking around, you're out working all these people. Uh, but we were talking passion specific to sports. Uh, Ev and I were talking a few weeks ago over at Thrive and I was saying that like I have this real passion within me um, uh, for mental health. 
um, and like self improvement and like feeling better. And that passion really came from me hurting so bad mentally mm-hmm. um, and, and kind of burning the candle at both ends and a lot of different things. And Billy and I really started this because um, uh, physical and mental health I had between the seizures and just this brain cloud, whatever you want to call it, just really just overwhelmed with everything. We really had to just kind of peel the onion back and figure out a lot of different solutions. And then Billy was in the hospital. And then I went to his backyard and said, hey, man, we've been talking about this for too long. Now is the time we're going to get on here. Um, So we really like to tell any type of relatable stories that either we've been through, we've gone through, some things that we do on a daily basis. And a lot of our listeners have really been able to resonate with a lot of these different stories. So you don't have to give us your whole entire story, uh, but is there anything that you want to share that you've been through, gone through, whether wrestling or sports helped you or something that you do on the daily that somebody can kind of learn from? Because you stay very even keeled. And, you know, Billy likes to compare all the other parents in wrestling but I like to hear from the guys who have actually been on the mat, who have coached for a long period of time. Like, it's no accident that you're calm with your kids mm-hmm. because you know probably how it has affected other kids whose parents weren't calm or the coach didn't stay calm. So, you know, really up to you. You could set some guardrails here, but, you well, know. Before we get to that, mm-hmm. can I just take one second? You're big on mental health, but do you think that's because you've found some answers for you? Oh, 100%. And you know that maybe you could touch somebody who's struggling a little bit and just show them that maybe you don't have the right recipe for them, Mm -hmm. but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So like, it's cool to struggle. I mean, you just have to know that you could get out of that struggle. And yeah, I mean, Evan and I were talking about Thrive and, you know, we just did kind of like a quick video just talking about Thrive. And I started like going off on like mental health and like ways to feel better. And like, I was like, sorry, Ev, I sound like a mental health guru, but, but him and I literally said like, I'm super passionate about it because I struggled so yeah. bad. Maybe nobody really realized I was struggling, but, you know, when I was the head coach, those are long nights. There's a lot of emails going back and forth until about 11 o'clock. Trying to find balance. You know, and then you wake up with kind of like that same energy. You know, Evan and I were talking last night where he does this prayer right before bed, and I said, dude, don't forget that because I sent him a video that talks about whatever you're thinking about or doing before bed is going to dictate how you start your next day. So I think where we kind of fell into that realm was right before bed. That's when you start worrying. Yeah. Well, why did I say this 15 years ago? Uh, these bills are due. Uh, when am I going to do this in a few months? And it's like, no, man, slow things down. Like we have more control of our brains yeah. than, than we might think. And when you're kind of a yes man and a people pleaser, you're kind of, you know, you got all these burners going at the exact same time. Yeah. And now the, 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 the bell's going off on one. There's a fire over here. And it gets over, got, overwhelming. Yeah, it gets overwhelming as yeah. shit. But if you can kind of slow things yeah. down, Focus on that gratitude. We talk about the cold plunge all the time. That's been a huge relief for me. I didn't want to get in this morning. Did you do it? Of course. But, you know, and I knew I was going to feel feel good. And, like, I didn't feel bad, but it was out there. It was raining. It was, like, 43 degrees. I knew it was going to be cold as shit. Let me ask but you I a literally question. got in. It felt great. Some kid the other day told me he could do a 45-minute cold plunge. Okay. Is this a thing? Listen, I'm no I'm no cold plunge guru, but that's got a hypothermia written all that's over. That's what I was going to say. You know like, I, this can't be and real. I to, I'm trying to find my piece for four minutes and get the heck out of yeah. there. I'm trying to get fucking, what was that movie with uh, Adam Sandler where he had that black foot? Uh, Mr. Mr. Deeds. Deeds. Yeah. I'm trying to get black foot in there, but I don't know. Is that a health risk? Probably. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, there's no way this is possible. Yeah. All you right. got to be careful who you listen to, homie. Yeah, I didn't believe him. <laughs> but I also you wanted to believe make... them if you're asking no, me. No, I'm asking because the kid was like, I'll bet you $500. And I was like, I'll Bro. take the bet, but I don't believe it. He's and gonna you're need probably going to need an ambulance. He's going to need it for the medical bill. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. All right, so now that I interrupted, <laughs> let's get back to Dave. Yeah. Tell us some stuff. So, <laughs> I, I guess going to... My mental health part of it, I, I try to use f- these five words and I try to apply them, to, you know, to coaching. And I'll give you a story with that. And that's control what you can control. Mm. And I, in, in big picture, there's just so many things that have been thrown at me, um, been thrown at others. That, and, I, and I try to spread the word that you can't control everything. And if you use negative energy towards things that you can't control, you're going to drown yourself. Truth. Um, so I always try to focus on like, and just as an example, you know, coaching a wrestling match or, you know, and even doing work in my backyard, you know, if I can't can't control the weather. Mm. I can't control, you know, what this kid's going to eat at home tonight. 
I can't control, you know, how good the other team is, but what I can control is my preparation. I can't control how, you know, good of a shape I, you know, at least try to get the team into. I can't control uh, whether or not I covered my patio set, which, full disclosure, I did not cover my patio <laughs> set. You got to call uh, Coach Lou next that year. That was too real with the rain today. Yeah, Something <laughs> was going on over there. And, and part of that, like, I, I try to mentally live in the moment. That's why I come across as calm. And part of that... Um, so around, around COVID time, before COVID time, um, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she, she was diagnosed with a sarcoma and it started, and sarcoma is a soft tissue cancer that she had on her leg. Um, it, it developed the size of a softball and she had it removed. And, and at the time she had it removed, they told her it's either going to never come back again, or it's going to never stop coming back. And she went, I, I want to say, you know, maybe within a, a month or two of like the full clearance until another one came back. And they said, all right, we could take this one out. And basically what they do is they, 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 they take them out and then they, you know, give radiation and, and they try to, um, you know, they, they hope it doesn't spread into the blood. And then what happens is some time goes by and then hopefully it doesn't develop again. And then sure enough, another one came back. And it got to the point where she knew that, all right, we were out of the hole. It either doesn't come back anymore and you're good. And it, it kind of kept coming back. So um, I believe it was around um, the winter of 2020, 2019, 2020, um, that, that winter where she was put on hospice. Um, and she was on, uh, she was put on hospice, I want to say either that December or January, I forget the exact time frame. Uh, so it's really, it, it's grounding in that, you know, my, my mom's out on hospice and she, you know, she could be with us for another week, another couple of days. Um, and at the same time, my, my kids were little, you know, my, my son was, you know, eight years old. My little guy was, you know, two, two and a half, three years old. Um, and you know, when you're put on hospice, you're given, I, I think it's typically the, it's about eight weeks left to live. Um, and that was 2020. And, and so every day you're kind of, I'm trying to live in the moment, mm. you know, and, and dealing with the, you know, the things that are going on around you because everybody's, everybody's got to battle their fight, they're fighting and everybody's got a battle they're facing. 100%. And, you know, the first month came and went and, you know, my mom was still with us. And now it's like, you're, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to prepare for grief and preparing for grief. Sometimes it's harder than grief itself because you're sure. trying to build yourself up for like, you know, the, you know, you know, what's coming. So much of that unknown in there too. And then, and then COVID hit. And then it's like now, you know, it's hard to see my mom and, you know, she's on hospice and, you know, you know, the inevitable is coming. And then, and then all of a sudden you're, we're three months into it and then we're four months into it and, all, and now she's not on hospice anymore. And like, now you have this sense of, now you got some hope, we're, we're, you're, you're into hope now and you're thinking this is great. But then as we got that hope, the world shut down yeah. and that's, and now it's like, like my mom's got a second lease on life and maybe not, maybe she's got limited time. But now COVID it's more hits. time than you thought, but though. Keep you in the moment too, though. Huh? And and we and we we tr you know we were, but then we we couldn't see her as much as we wanted to. Um, and that was the toughest part because the risk of that because you know the tumors were spreading to her lungs, so a respiratory yeah. infection like COVID, we di we didn't want to be the reason that you know exasperated yeah, everything. That's really difficult too, man. So you know we, we you know we found ways to see her, and there were times she you know she would go out and buy herself like this one safety suit just so she could see her grandkids because all that mattered to her was seeing her grandkids. Uh, you know. And and this was and again this was again this was around wrestling time and, and, I and coach say, softball. I was seeing and you every day those times, dude. You, I, Pete, I was and I was you coaching never you every, let every anyone night. know. Like we were together every night, dude. Mm -hmm. And like you Literally, gave me a little bit night. of an idea, and, and 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 not to cut you off, but I went to that wake, and I never really got to meet or know your mom, but I got a really good vibe on who she was as a human being, and uh, what an absolutely incredible soul. But my point there you know, selfishly that you and I were together was you never, you, you never gave us that vibe. And like, we were talking a lot at night too. And they weren't talks like you were venting to me about what was going on in life. Like we were just chopping it up, whether you were drinking in the basement and Jack was watching TV. <laughs> like we talked a lot throughout those times. Yeah. Um, and, and that's such a, a, it's such a testament to you and who you are as a person that nobody in that room ever knew what was going on with you. It, you know? Yeah, but that speaks volumes, like you said. Like, bro, I've been there. I go through it, going through it right now, watching my dad. You know, six years going on, going on six years from a stroke and a downward spiral since. I try to wear it as best I can, but mm -hmm. there's days that it it fucking hits hard. Yeah, it is and you um, you know, you try to internalize it because of your really personal really personal experience, mm -hmm. how you deal with it and, you know, what you're feeling when it comes to it. I know for me, I don't want to, 
I don't want to show my kids how I feel that I'm scared about it because then they're going to worry. And they don't have that concept of what death is or like an understanding. They love their they love their grandfather. It's all about pop pop, even in the capacity it is. But I remember COVID and he was sick. He was fucked up and he was he's got every risk factor there is. He got the first COVID shot and he wound up in the hospital. I'm not saying it was from the shot, but it was right after. Mm -hmm. They didn't think he was coming home. He was on a ventilator. He was in a coma. Four days. My phone rang, FaceTime. It was that. At that point, he said, I don't care what it is. Now, he he was wide awake and alert right after coming off this ventilator. He's like, I don't care what it is. I'm going to see my grandkids as much as possible. If you'd like to tell me I can't come to work and I can't see my grandkids, uh, you know, come to your house. Uh, you don't have to work for me. He goes, I am my own boss. Mm -hmm. He said, but I will go out on my terms. And you know what? Coming out of that... Bro, I'm happy he took the stance he did because they get to know their grandfather a little bit more each day while his capacity changes a little bit more each right. day. But I understand the confusion that you must have felt at that time and how hard that that fucking struggle was, especially being isolated during COVID. It's just you alone with your thoughts. And it, it, the tough part is it's we knew that this wasn't going to ultimately end well. And it was yeah. it was it was a, it was a prolonged grief. And trying to appreciate, and really trying to appreciate every moment, every phone call, every, you know, and even come to summer and everything when we could be outside and seeing her in person, yeah. you know, trying to appreciate all those moments. And one thing she tried to instill in me, and my mom was young when she had me. My mom was 18 years old when she gave birth to me. I mean, she she died at, uh, you know, 56 years old. Young. Um, but, you know, she had two boys, it's me and my brother Rich. And, and she would always say, appreciate every moment you have with those boys. Wow. Um, because it's going to come so fast to so just, you know, take a moment sometimes just to appreciate what, you know, what they're doing and how much they love you and how much yeah. you love them. And so we come back around to the following winter and, you know, it happened again. Um, she, more tumors popped up and she got put back on hospice. Um, and, and this time it just, it, it, we weren't as lucky and, and she passed away. It, it actually was um, three years ago, three days ago. Um, oh, okay. She passed away March 30th of uh, 2001. So it was, just, it was the third anniversary um, and, and I was, and I got, I don't want to say I was fortunate to have my kids there and my wife there as supportive as they were, but I kind of used that, use that to ground me and just kind of really try to stay even keel and just appreciate like at that time, like I was my, I'm the world to my son, Jack. Like mm -hmm. he, he's, he, he was more clingy then to me than he is now, but he was like, he is my buddy, mm -hmm. followed me everywhere. And I, and I try not to take it for granted because there were days right. when I would get home and I would just like, I'd be exhausted from coaching wrestling from, you know, you know, just yeah. You know, saying goodbye to my mom and everything, and it's just like my my kid wants to be with me. Like, yeah. I, I don't want to let this. You know, I don't want to forget this moment. And I try to, you know, instill that where, even now when I'm at a wrestling tournament with them, or even when I'm like, I take him, you know, somewhere, you know, after weigh-ins, we go out and eat. I, I try to take it in and like, this is going to end soon. Yeah. Like at some point, these memories of me going out with my kids, of being, mm. you know, be, being out with my wife. You know, like with, you know, with my kids, they're going to get older. You know, they're going to, they're not going to want dad around as much. You're right. I've said and that. I know I'm not going to be the cool dad in probably like 10 years, but I'll take the time I can now. It yeah. is, it is definitely overwhelming as, as much as it's so incredible to have that. Cause I have that as well. It gets to be a lot, you know, mm -hmm. where like, you know, your phone's ringing, you're stressed, you got a lot going on, but you're so right though, Dave, and your mom truly, like the fact that you say that your mom instilled that stuff and then Billy and I could actually see it live firsthand mm -hmm. is so incredible. And you're because like that with all the kids though, like, all right, so obviously your kids, but like you take that, let's spend time together as a group, like when we're in that setting, like we're there, you know, it's like a team family thing. And that those lessons your mother gave you, you're sharing it, whether you're using the terms with all of us, but your actions are showing everybody the same stuff your mother taught you. And that's living on through you to us with our kids. And they're going to have those yeah. same values. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I hate when I see parents get so upset on a wrestling mat yeah. or, or in any aspect of sports mm -hmm. because I, I try to remind myself everybody's dealing with a battle, whether yeah. they're 40 years old, 60 years old, or they're eight years old. Yep. Everybody's dealing with something. And, and ultimately, we're just trying to ground each other. So, you know, when, when, when my kids come off the field, when they come off the mat, you know, me yelling at them, it doesn't help anything. We'll, we'll kind of, we'll correct things. Now, if my kid were to throw a tantrum, and that's one good thing that I could say about Parker. Jack, we're, we're working on it, and, he, and he's, he's getting still there. Young Jack's too, a good though. kid, He's though. still young, too, though. But, uh, you know, like, 
it ultimately, is your life any different now after this match? And I mean, that's what oh, I say to the college kids yeah. that, uh, not to cut you off, but that, you know, maybe didn't even make it to NCAAs. Your life, I'm sorry, wrestling community, but no one's life has ever changed from either winning an NCAA mm -hmm. title or going 0-30. There is no direct correlation. We yeah. put all this pressure and all these things on the results, and I felt that walking back into Regents, mm -hmm. feeling like a loser when I coached there, and I'm like, everyone was so inviting to me, Steve Rivera, all these people. I'm like, oh, my God, do you guys remember me? Like, yeah. I, 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 I didn't think anybody even, even knew who I was. I thought only the champs got love, you know, or, or, or different things like that. So, but, but, yeah, you're so right about that. I try to make it takeaway forget about you know not about the winning itself but you know w what do we get out of this like what did you get out of wrestling and, and a lot of it's a camaraderie like that's the one thing i want my kids to get out of wrestling yeah. is to network to make friends so to learn a work ethic yeah you, you are know, such a successful. special soul you, you you are such a special soul because i felt you next to me all the time you know at practice and everything but then i'm friends with the dime you know, so Dedine would always tell me amazing things about you. Like uh, me and my buddy Trevor, we talk about people having conversations behind your back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it comes to the real estate and stuff, like we want people talking about us yeah. behind our back. All the conversations that go on behind your back are all so incredible. Uh, same I've with Jay. About them same with Jay. Times. And it's just like, you know, Jay's such an amazing soul too. Um, he just got connected with uh, Dave Seidenberg. He's doing amazing things right now. Um, but he's been singing your praises. Like I felt the energy back but people that i know like and trust have felt that same exact vibe with you and now billy you know who's my bud he's with you in a different capacity i he get to see it feels it i can see it parent wise though you got to and see it through the years too. as a coach i get the influence obviously he you know especially little sharks he's on the field he's on the mat helping here and there but he's got full-time job coaching but i get to experience the parent in dave yeah. on a wrestling mat and at a football game and I see how he adapts. And I'm I'm really big on role models for myself. So, like, I'll take a little bit. I'll take a little bit. And I try to, you know, find me as a parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've built a great group of examples around me, and I'm forever thankful. You've heard me say it on here that Dave always comments how special our little group is. And I see the real value in that. I mean, I like everybody we're with on a Sunday at a tournament or whatever, but I see the real value in it because Dave showed me that value. Okay. You know, it's huge. And you mentioned Jay. Jay came up to me at the Howell Qualifier. Max and Caden wrestled. Jay comes up to me. He's talking about you. He's talking about Dave. Jay's awesome, man. I've I've heard his story. I've heard how much growth he's had, and I know you know Jay. Yeah. Um, just a solid, solid dude. I, I just wanted to not ignore Jay when you mentioned that. 100%. Right. Say, it's so important to surround yourself with, with good people that have the same values as you do, that, that have the same drive as you. I mean, that, that's how to be, I, that's how I feel to be successful. Surround yourself with good people. Yeah. I mean, inadvertently, I'm lucky that because through my kids' sports, I'm not, you know, they are good people and I would, you know, I would be surrounded by them anyway. Yeah. You know, because these are the, you know, their kids are my friends' kids. And, yeah. and so then your, their parents are, you know, my parents, you know, my, my kids' friends' parents are now my friends. Yeah. Yeah. But when they're good people, it just may, you know. It's easy. As a community, because it takes a community. It takes yeah. a village. Sure does. You know, it's, I, I, was, I can't get through, you know, coaching my kids without the help of my wife, my wife's parents. Like well, it, they can't hear you. They need to hear your wife. When you're on the match, she always says that you're too quiet. She, she's the voice. My, yeah. my, my wife, believe it or not, is the wrestling coach she's of the two She's got a lot of tenacity she, as a wrestling <laughs> mom. I can see but it. She I, always says she's Dave's too it. quiet and the boys can't hear him, so she's got to yell. Yeah. You got you got to be quiet, dude. You yeah. got the headgear on, everyone's screaming, that I, calm sometimes demeanor. Sometimes I try to like, not say too much. Yeah. Like I, you know, I, I try to sit back and give them the little guidance they need. Mm -hmm. she's, the vo she's the voice out there. Yeah. Get up! She, my, I, my wife is a true wrestling mom. She she really is. She crushes she it, it though. She embraces yeah, all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know. It's been great Even, seeing her all winter at the yeah. Devos. She loves it. Yep. She, we uh, When we were in Wildwood, you could see like how into it she was. She's on the phone. She's telling us who's up here, who's up there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we didn't we didn't miss a beat. We knew exactly where Jack was. Yep. We knew where we had to be, when we had to be there. And I don't know if you've she ever been to the board at the shore. You're so right yeah. about that. Because those Devos are straight chaos. Yeah. And she'll come up to me like, hey, so-and-so's over here. She's solid. Hey, go do this. Hey, Pete. And I was yeah. like, all right, nice. Nice. 
guarantee she's got that. it unlocked. She's good. What, it comes back to control what you can control. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you know, you can control knowing where your kid's supposed to be and, and, and making sure he's gotten the help and knowing where other parents, kids, you know, need to be because this sport's confusing. It really is. I mean, I've been in it for 20 years and it, it, it gets more yeah, and more with the technology. Yeah. It was easier but, with the brackets in the hallway. Nah, yeah. bro, I'll tell you what. We were trying to, get, I'm trying to get on the phone to see, to check for JP's match, to check for Jack's match. I, you, I could not get in. There the was Wi-Fi, no, bro. yeah, Isn't the it? internet wasn't working right. great. So that's what like, I mean. The brackets in the hallway. It's, yeah. All that right. Fall technology is. Well, that's like we're life all though at, at this point. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, last night, uh, my kids are homesick. There was like a 20 minute span that the internet went out and we have one of those Roku TVs mm-hmm. and, you know, oh, I don't yeah. have cable. So like now that the internet's out, what, 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 are we gonna what do? the fuck are we going to do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, same thing in, when we were at the tournament. We're trying to get on. What are we going to do? They don't have it posted nowhere. I got a, I got a parent now to three kids that are crying sick. I mean, luckily, I'm a good dad. We got through that 20-minute span. 20 but- minutes. I know. I was having that conversation with Mason. He wanted my phone. And I was like, no, dude. I'm yeah. like, when I was your age, we had no phones. I was like, Bro. I think I would just sit in the truck with my dad. We would listen to music. Mm-hmm. I would look out the window, use my imagination, count the signs, uh, you know, I spy shit. I don't yeah. know. Figure it out, Me dude. and Max you're, had you're, that you're conversation last night. He's like, well, what did you do if there was no internet and it was raining? I'd fucking sit there. I said we went and played with toys or <laughs> yeah. figured it out. He goes, you played with Uncle Michael? So yeah, he goes. Did you guys fight a lot? I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we did whatever, yeah, so whatever passed the time. Funny yeah. with technology. So last night, my son Parker had practice at Elite. When it's funny, you name drop Steve Rivera and yeah. Frankie Edgar. Yeah, uh, the two of the greatest guys that I could put my kid around. hundred percent. Um, and Parker's last match was coached by Frankie Edgar, and Frankie was there for his son. Yeah. And wild when he just he saw Parker was up, just comes in the corner and like he doesn't think Same anything of it. Like that you do. Yeah. It's you the know? family mentality, you know, yeah. the elite wrestlers. But yeah. so I, I take Parker home, and then I find out Jack's at my in-laws house so he's eating dinner there and everything hanging out there so I go over to pick him up and I find out he's learning to play checkers which wow. I think is great except yeah. I, so I go in there in their in their den and he's learning to play checkers on the computer <laughs> he's okay. playing checkers against the computer I think it's hysterical <laughs> like we're talking like First, you know, level board games here, and he's playing the computer there, and he learned. That's how we learn how to play checkers, and that's so at least cool, if the though. internet went down, we just got to find an actual board of checkers. Yeah, there you go. Well, that'll but be your still, next hurdle. Like, trying to find one. Of those I was just boards. gonna say, I wonder if they even have them. That's our generation of kids. Like that's yeah. all they know are screens, and it's like it's sometimes you want to take it away, but it's like. This is how they've grown up. Like, we grew up riding our bikes around the block and yeah. looking for people. Calling the house phone, looking yeah. for, hey, can so-and-so knocking come out? Knocking on doors. Knocking doors. Yeah. They grew up going on on, on, on Robo- uh, Roblox yep. or going on Fortnite and just right. seeing what friends were online at the yeah. time. Right. Like, that's how they and grew up. And then they right. joined the game on Roblox yeah. or whatever. And I don't understand it. Like, Max's iPad will FaceTime and Rocco has a phone. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's on the phone. They'll FaceTime each other. And then be playing Roblox together. Yeah, yeah but we're like, not supposed to get to it because our parents didn't get what we were doing no. either. Yeah, I you guess. Know, some I mean, of the words that we would say, they're yeah. like, what is that? And then now they got these new words. <clears throat> but like as parents, we're not supposed to get all of it because we didn't come up like that. Our parents didn't come up the way we did. They didn't understand. What do you mean you're grinding on the freaking BMX bike? What do you mean you need need these rollerblades you can grind on it? They weren't doing none of that. You're not wrong. You know, so it's like... It's reassuring, though, to hear from other people that it's not just my kid that's communicating with their friends through video games most of the time. Well, I've been having a hard time with Fortnite, but now that I'm talking to you, like, his buddies, his cousin, like, he's interacting with his friends through Fortnite. Like, his one friend, Brayden, they play Fortnite. Fortnite together like that's what they do and I'm like I'm all pissed off about the Fortnite because I'm I, I wish the kid would play catch or just get yeah. back to how things mm-hmm. were but you know he's nine now I don't have that he's not at that age Carter's at four years old where he wants to just hang out with yeah. dad all the time so yeah. I need to kind of adapt a little bit I miss it I know he still loves me but it's different. He's getting a little bit older now. He's in third grade. It's been kind of like a big step. Then yeah, I'm like, shoot, he's going to be double digits next year. I'm sure Mace still wants precious. to be around you as much as possible. No, he does. I, yeah. I dropped him off right before this, and he asked me if I was coming in. I was like, no, yeah. you know, I'm coming here. I appreciate but every moment. I know, eventually man. there's going to be one day. I'm not out there yet when my kids don't want you know me around them at all. I know. But I'm sure, you know, hopefully it never happens. But if it does, I'm trying to appreciate, you know, even at nighttime when I got to lay down with Jack before he goes to bed, like I say to myself, this isn't the most comfortable. Yeah. But, you know, he wants me around. Like, it's yeah. not the worst thing in the world that my son wants me to lay with him to put him to sleep at night. You so know, it's me I'm, and Max are sleeping on the couch the last couple of nights because the girls all have fevers. So they're upstairs. All right. So it's a couch. It's not a ton of room. We cuddle on the couch and like for 10 minutes before he falls asleep, 
I love it. It yeah. sucks. Yeah. It's brutally uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. Your back's hurt. Yeah, your shoulders. But you know what, dude? I'll take it. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you said, it's not going to last forever. I'm not going to be cuddling on a couch no. with a 15 year old. Like, I know that my my run is mm-hmm. going to end. I know. I'll take it. It's crazy with these years of kids. You know, it's like one year, there's so much growth, so much changes in one year. And it's almost like one child year is equivalent to like three or four like regular years. You know, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And it's well, almost they grow like, a lot so young. Yeah, yeah. A lot happens in one year yeah. for them, you know, because Rowan's going to be three coming up. And we just met my little baby niece down in Virginia. And I'm like, holy cow, man. She was just that yeah, so tiny with the bottles and mm-hmm. all that other stuff. Now she's walking and talking. She yeah. wants to help the baby out. And yeah, it's it's so special though. It's so special. I was so talking special. about that with somebody in relation to, to Max because Max is a really young first grader. So his birthday is the end of June. And I'm not saying he's behind other kids, but like he's younger. So like that that maturity, even if it's six months at six years old, is huge, it is. huge mentally, physically, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So you know it goes in the blink of an eye, though. But yeah, at that age, it's like a year translates to three. It's like yeah. they're puppies. Yeah, yeah that's really why is. our kids get along so well. Cause, yeah, because Jack's born they're in both, June as well. So we had both, that conversation. Both me and your wife. Yeah. It's and they gravitate to each other. Do you guys well, have spring flag coming up now? Did you guys sign up for that? So you, we're doing um, we're doing good sports in preparation for uh, for fall. tackle. Yeah, for fall. And what are you guys doing over there? Is that a flag type like dynamic full on or just training? Kinda, yeah, yeah, like running, that. getting used to whatever Scott's going to implement. That's good. The nine U boys did that over there on, on yeah. Sundays. I'm we're, that's what we're doing. I, I still feel like it would be really intimidating to get Billy and Scott on horses. I want to go up and down the sideline. <laughs> we're going to drive a golf Can you imagine cars. another team of seven-year-olds <laughs> approaching the field, seeing that, you know, the two hell coaches there are on horseback. Do I'm not, I'm not sure I could, I could ride a horse. Do it. I'd have to take a lot of lessons I, I, for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'll take the golf cart though. That's the safe way. We can way make to go. that it's, work. I'm talking about intimidating other seven year olds right now. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll do the horses for the pep rally. If right, you're right. from Howard stuff, right, dude, yeah. that's a whole vibe. <laughs> we'll bring the horses man. out for the pep rally. It's so mental, dude. It's so it mental. I remember when I was coaching at Howell, we walked by. Now, Southern beat us in the overall group the year before. We had a speaker on wheels that we played Welcome to My House as loud as the speaker would go. And we rolled that thing past their bench. And it was a confidence boost for us. Yeah. And we were the ones who just took an L to them. Mm-hmm. Like, but there's something to be said about yeah. you playing that scene. You roll up with a down cowboy hat on a bit. horse, dude. You're yeah. in their head, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can pull off a cowboy hat on a horse, but maybe we'll give uh, it a whirl. I think the whole Mel Brooks, you know, Braveheart theme would be yeah, just paint your yeah. face oh, and just scream. Go. Listen, I'm let's, all about that. Let's go. The horse thing, you kind of lose right, me, but right, we can try right, it at yes. the pep rally if okay. you want. That's hilarious. Billy's got a need for speed, though, dude. You put him on a quad or something, he'll Let come him, rolling up on all it. All day. I'll, I'll rip <laughs> a little 50cc quad up and down <laughs> that sideline. I'm ready to go. Yeah, man. Ride around with a boombox. It's not too hard to psych up some seven-year-olds, I'm sure. No, I, I think that, that'll really put them over the edge. Yeah, hundred percent. That's my role with the nine. You guys, man, yeah. I'm a hype guy. Get them hype. Yeah, yeah get those guys. Bro, freaking I'm 39 up. years old. You're my hype guy. Yeah. What are you talking I'm all about? about it. You're everybody's hype I'm guy. All about the hype. You bring the energy wherever you go. Honestly, selfishly, I'm so thrilled that all those kids, those these little boys that you're talking about, they got introduced to wrestling through me. Like that, yeah. I, I will always have that. Whether the they go to Triumph, yeah. Elite, you know, anywhere else, wherever their wrestling career goes, I could selfishly know that I was the one that they stepped on the mat for the first ever time. Like I gave them the intro. I remember Jack was going around saying he's only going to my practices. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, he, that's not. He didn't realize yeah. that your name was Pete. He thought that Coach Pete was a title of distinction. <laughs> <laughs> so we took him to Elite and he was like, ah, but I like my coach. Pete better. I don't like their coach Pete. <laughs> and I was like, well, no, the coach there is Coach Steve. His name is not Coach Pete. He goes, yeah, but I like, I don't like their coach Pete. I like my coach Pete. I'm like, okay, I, I get where he's thinking. He's All right. Such a coward, dude. <laughs> so we, yeah, we, our guys, our boys were the OGs there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Of the and Riley we'll Wrestling Club. That. Yeah. And you know what? Max loves RWC. So like last night, he knew we were supposed to be coming there and he didn't have baseball and he was pumped. He was especially pumped to show off his new wrestling shoes. But he was sick, and Mayor said no, and 
He didn't have a fever for four hours. I thought it was okay. She ruled with an iron fist on that. But he was, like, heartbroken. He's like, I haven't been to Coach Pete's in a while, blah, 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 blah. And I've told you, he's, like, RWC for life. So, like, we signed up for Triumph. You didn't have a night during the week. And we hadn't been there many Sundays because we were at tournaments and doing whatever. So Scott says to me, he goes, how do, how do you like Triumph? I was like, I like it, but... I don't think we need it now that Pete has a night during the week. I said, you know, I enrolled for three months, but after that commitment's expired and I'm done paying for it, we will be back at Pete's on Tuesdays. Like, I don't, you know, you had you had released that night right after I committed yeah. to, to a three-month contract. And, yeah, um, no, I... I Honestly, this whole time that the club was no, no, going no, on, like you guys know Aflac Insurance? Yeah. What do they call that? Like a supplemental insurance? Yeah. I'm like a supplemental wrestling no, no, club. No, no, like, but I never wanted to compete with those son, guys. And you don't I, have to. But like I want guys to go to those clubs and kind of get their butts kicked a little bit with Steve in that really hot, intense room and then come to me on Sunday so, and find that balancing act. And I've noticed that a lot this winter that if somebody was struggling in the Jersey Shore League, they would come in you know, and get their guy a little bit of confidence. Have have a good time. That's you know, cool. with that's the a sport great outlook there. for somebody maybe a little bit more established than my son in the sport. My son's had some mild success. He he's done okay, but he's not a world beater. He's not war at war at the shore. He's not war at the shore ready. It's not even a thought for me. I need right now to keep the sport fun for my six year old. Right and. I will tell anybody, if there's one thing Coach Pete does, he engages the kids to love the sport. That's My it. son would not like wrestling if it wasn't for you being at the forefront of his wrestling career. And, and that's very nice to hear, but I only have that approach because I know what it feels like to hate the sport and quit. So like we That's always what your say, value like, is there. we always say that like the hard times bring a lot of a lot of good. When I was 17 years old, telling my co you know, telling people that I was done wrestling, the coach is calling my house yeah. phone, trying to get my parents to say, and I said I'm done. I instantly regretted it 12 hours later. But thankfully, my journey went like that. Thankfully, my my journey had a lot of obstacles in college. Thankfully, I I had all these hard times. So now that I know my true value. Yeah. I wouldn't be that Coach Pete if there wasn't a men's struggle. Yeah. And yeah. there was a point in time where I, I said it I said it to the group, but I didn't even think I was ever going to be involved in wrestling ever again when I was 17. And so the know. fact that these little kids can now love the sport that I once hated. Well, yeah. I loved it, and then I kind of hated it. Things got to be too much, and I completely quit. Thankfully, we talk about it a lot, but those hard times bring a lot of good, whether it's – you know, so something that was self-induced, whether it's your mental health or a physical well, battle that you went through. But wrestling that's struggle, where all overcoming the, struggle, all right? The I mean, comes. life set you up for that. Yep. You know, yep. And your outlook on wrestling. And, and then now there's a whole nother group of kids that come in at 9 o'clock. Well, yeah, now there's, there's a whole nother wave. So Max was going when Rosie was coming before cheerleading kind of had shared competitions and stuff on Sundays. She would go to the to the Sunday morning and Max was... And never forget, we came with Rosie for the first time. Max went out to help Pete, and he had to wrestle with some of the younger kids. And Pete told him, like, take it easy, and he kind of turned one kid, and I brought him over. I said, bro, don't let them just, don't just lay down, but let them, let them do what they have to do. I remember where you started, man. No, and he did it. He went out, and I was so proud of him that he was able to let somebody else get that moment, and he was able to be the nail so that Pete could instruct. He was a leader at that second, and it made me feel so good. And I see you and how you respond to wrestling, and it's a similar philosophy to Pete. Now, did you face any adversity throughout your wrestling career that kind of shaped that? I wouldn't say I faced adversity. I think just being able to see kids over the, you know, as a coach grow and, and kind of what made them tick and, and just really some kids internalize it so much differently than others. And you really, it's hard to tell. And you, you realize that, some kids just, they process it a little too intently or maybe yeah. the pressure from home is just too strong. Mm. Or maybe they're not even out there just because, maybe success isn't the most important thing to them. Like like a kid that maybe wins five matches out of 30, maybe that's a, that's a huge victory for them. Right. So you, you try to find like, if I treat every kid the same, like, the, you know, like over the top intently, like we got to get better, you're going to lose kids because yeah. it's just, it, the, the pressure is just too strong. And, you, and you, like I said, you just don't know what kind of pressure these kids are getting from outside of you. So I try, you know, I don't want to say, P keeps it much more fun than I ever could. But I try to keep it lighthearted and in perspective that winning is important. Like if you don't have like, you know, that as your your guideline, we, we, 
ultimately you're trying to teach kids how to be successful. Yeah. And learning how to be successful is also learning how to fail. Yeah. I agree with that so much. And learning and, life and, and that's a big part of it. And you know what? You want kids to learn that this could be a fun thing to do, and that's how you can build up their confidence to do it, to you know, to get more and more into it because that's how they're going to learn how to fail by getting more and more into wrestling. Yeah, I've said it. Uh, I obviously don't want my kid to be a loser, but right now at six years old, I'm okay with him losing and learning how to lose properly. You keep saying that at six years old. I got news well, for you. Well, it's life, but he's starting I got news early for you at six. It's going to be like that the whole way through. Yeah, but when I say it's going to be six, like that in high school. But he's starting young. Instead, of, yeah. he's facing that adversity today at six yeah. as opposed to facing it at 15 and now having a meltdown because right. you've never faced adversity, 100%. you've never lost, and you have no idea how to deal with 100%. it. 100%. So I'd but much prefer to start saying, it now. It's common. Oh, yeah. It's common. And it's going to hit know? some people like a freight train yeah. but what i'm saying is we're preparing for that Prepping those long right days right now at six yeah. we've begun that yeah, battle and no. that journey no that's really good because a lot of times there's a little bit of false narrative created at these young ages whether it's mad success early on or you know chasing these state titles or something yeah, and then before you know success it, early on and now you're in your kid's head let's say he loves the sport he's not winning at five or six mm -hmm. and now you're you're overdoing it, telling him it's not for him or whatever. If the kid likes it, maybe he's got success at 10. Maybe he's got success at 12. That's the thing. We can never you really don't know. see yet. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we as coaches can kind of see how things are going to play out with the kids already. Well, Lou Riggi will tell idea. you he wasn't really great until he got to high school. And Lou will never toot his own horn, but Lou wrestled in Atlantic City. Lou's a really good wrestler. But he said it didn't turn up until he was in high school. Yep. You know, so like it's a long journey. It's a different journey for every person. Yeah, so it really like is. Every killer. I, I had a wrestler on my team recently. Uh, he was he was a hallway kid. He came out. He was he's a great personality, and I never realized how how much it meant to him until his mom came up to me and she says this sport is saving his life. And, yes. I, and I and I said. I, I mean, we love having him. She goes, no, you don't understand. Like, he mm -hmm. wasn't going to come to school anymore. Damn. He was done with school. He so would not get know, up in the Billy. morning. Yeah, he, he, he just he was know. depressed all the time. He he just didn't felt like he belonged he anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and he found the home in that wrestling. And room. yeah, he came out for wrestling, and she said he fell in love with it. And she said, I, I knew he wasn't great. Like, yeah. and he was one of our heavier weights. Yeah, and he just he was one of us. Like, he just fit in with us. He found That's that amazing. brotherhood. He needed. Yeah, he Is found he his camaraderie. Now? Yes. Okay. And and he was just. I called him my de facto captain. Like he was like our, our heart and soul yes. of the team. And, Every and team even after mom, that guy. mom was like afterwards, she said, you know, now I don't know what I'm gonna do with him. Like he plays baseball and that's getting him going, but it's not the same as wrestling. Like wrestling got him to keep coming to school. What's his plan and, for next year? Does he know yet? Uh, he doesn't know yet. And right and now we're still just trying to get him through. Somewhere. But and it's it's a different journey for yeah. every kid. And, yeah. and through wrestling, like, a lot of the kids gravitated to him. Like, they loved him. Like, he just loved being part of the team. Like, and he would take in some of the other kids that were, like, the, not the hammers, but, like, kids that were, like, new to it that. Yeah. Like, they just, they gravitate to each other. And, and really, like, I, I, the one part of wrestling I really love is that the, these kids, you know, learn how to network with each other and, and how to, like, learn to make these relationships. And really the bigger picture of... Wrestling's important. Yeah. Being successful is important. Like, if we don't have that to kind of focus yeah. on, what are we doing? Yeah. But at the same time, like, that success also comes with, you know, making these relationships, building these relationships, hopefully holding on to these relationships. I mean, think about, like, the you know, the relationships you made along the way. Like, Pete, I've known you for, what, 20 years? Yeah. You were at my wedding. I know. Yeah, we I discussed know. that this yeah. morning. I've been with my wife since she was 18. Like, she, you know, yeah. I'm 41 years old now. Like, I've been with my wife over 20 years, and I've, yeah. I've known you, and you've been at my wedding. Mm -hmm. And these relationships that relationships I've made indirectly through re through wrestling. Like, mm -hmm. I wrestled for Jackson. You were at Freehold. We yep. didn't kind of cross paths, but never too much. But, mm -hmm. you know, you know, being able to network and just stay in contact with each other, I think that's more important than anything I've ever really gotten out of wrestling myself is, is the friends I made along the way, yeah. the values yeah. I've gotten. And that's what I really hope gets instilled in the kids. And that's why, like, I try, I try to remain oh, They calm. already have it, they though. Will. Think about it. They do, but... I've, I never really saw it, it from that lens as a wrestling competitor, though, because you're only kind of, like, focused on your craft mm -hmm. and the day-to-day -day grind. You don't realize Johnny Post was with me the whole way through. A lot of my yeah. guys, Zach, a lot of those guys, I was with them in Predator. Like, we're seeing these kids mm -hmm. now. We can't see them as grown-ups yet, but the same exact thing's going to happen with them. I'm curious <clears throat> because I watch these boys on a Sunday, like Max, uh, Rocco, Jack, Jack, and Gavin, and they're running mat-to-mat -mat supporting each other. And I am so excited 
and curious to see in 10 years, let's say all the boys stick with it. In 10 years, what's that going to look like for them? You know, it just it could be different color singlets, but 100%. You're still close, but you know? think about the, the relationships that they've built yeah. at such an early age. Mm -hmm. I mean, Listen, I know Max is going to see Jack Jack at football. Let's say they're in different color singlets. Yeah. At, at one's at middle school North, one's at South, whatever it is. One's at different a different high, high school, mm -hmm. whatever. They've got a relationship that started at such an early age yep. in a capacity that they're going through so much emotion together, wrestling together, facing adversity, yep. and they're there for each other now. I wonder what that's going to look like in 10 years. Gonna look strong, I think baby. it's going to be something really special. But even 100%. think about what it's going to look like in twenty years, thirty years. Oh like, yeah. You know, hopefully, yeah. they're learning to rely on other people to like you know. Yeah. To, uh, the uh, end goal is to make them successful humans. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wrestling and, and football and every sport they do is such a big part of it. But I hope they learn how to just to work well with others. Yeah. yeah. To know that there's there's got to be a goal. Like we're, you know we're not just here. Well, look we're at them at purpose, football. But, they they. As a unit, now all those those four boys I mentioned are all on the same football team. Know. For the, you know, me and, me and Scott coach them. They work as a unit. They support each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. They are working with a common goal. In flag football, it's not supposed to be serious, but we were undefeated two seasons in a row. Those boys knew every bit of it that we were winning. They they didn't have to ask what the score was. They knew what the score yeah, was. That group got the juice, man. Yeah, and I mean, they all feed that, off of each other, too. Sports. Like, even yeah. literally, my kid will ask, Jack will ask me, Dad, what's the score? And it's like, oh, it's, yeah. it's Pee Wee baseball. We're not yeah. scores. Like, Dad, score. what's the score? Yeah. yeah. And it's they, they know that winning is important. It's it's not the only thing. That's got to make sure they know it's not the, it's yeah. the, only, the most important thing, but it's still important. It's wild like, that you're talking about. Being successful what you're doing is important. 100%. It's wild that you're talking about 20, 30 years from now because one of my Pop Warner buddies, his dad was my coach. He lives down in Manahawk, and I'm 38, so we've been friends over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's got four kids. He's down there. We still stay connected to this day. And, like, we went to different elementary schools. The mm -hmm. only common ground we had was football yeah. in Pop Warner. Yeah. That was how we became friends. And then we were friends in high school and different things. I, I, I played football. We were together a little bit then. But we're talking 30 years later, we're still here supporting each other. Yeah. Not on that not on that man island that we talk about, navigating life yeah. with your own paddle on your own raft, trying to navigate the seas where you get connected with your buddy who's living a similar life. Okay, now you guys are kind of riding these yeah. waves together and mm -hmm. things are a little bit easier to navigate opposed to putting yourself on that self-induced island. It's funny you say that, <clears throat> that you guys were in different schools growing up because Max and Jack are really close. And uh, next year they're going to separate in school. And I'm prepared for this to crush my son when he actually finds out. Mm. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. But They're so right. social. They're so resilient. They're gonna be yeah. Good. No, he'll be cool. But, like, they're that's his see boy. Each other between football it's and gonna wrestling, they're going to see each other All so much. So, fun thing. We're talking about hard work and, and athletics. Saturday was Max's first baseball game. It was a scrimmage against the Mariners. We get dressed. We're leaving the house. It's 8.15. I said, what's the most important thing, bud? He goes, that we work hard. Okay. I said, well, it's that we have fun here because he's never played baseball. We've worked a little bit on it. I said, here we're going to have fun. But now we go to football or we go to wrestling, something we've been doing two plus years. What's the most important thing? Have fun. Baseball, we want to work hard at. You just started four minutes ago. Yeah. Wrestling and football, you're playing two years, you want to have fun. His boys are all there. It's easy to have fun. Yeah, but they're working hard together. They bring the best out of each other. So. Now, is Parker going to stick around with baseball? You guys in baseball for the spring? Or we... Baseball is I don't a know where his time best. commitment, it's, dude. It is. It's a lot. I'll tell you yeah. what, every sport is a time 100%. commitment now. And it's, it's so... He, he's really, really into wrestling right now. Yes. He's into baseball, too. Okay. But he's a good kid, too, athlete, Parker. I feel like kid. we've talked about Jack a lot today. Yeah. Um, Parker's solid, dude. He's, like, he's a good a boy. Of, he's, got some, he's got some punk, selfish people around him. We've been that, fortunate. You know, and I, and he's we, not acting like them, which is, which is a beautiful thing. And I think he's going to be one of the leaders in that Predator program well, he could be a, sooner he could, than later. He could treat Max or Jack if he wanted to. Like, they were bothering him. Like, I know Max yeah. and, and that Jack. That older brother role is a little tough. Bro, he was great with the boys kids. this weekend. Mm, yeah. So... Uh, Little he's, compliment he's there. Been able to, he's been fortunate to be surrounded by good people, at least yeah. in the realm of sports. I mean, yeah. even even going back to elite. Yep. I mean, we've been ver really fortunate that one of the coaches there, Danny Rodriguez, who, who's an awesome dude, has yep. really kind of helped bring us along through it. His son, Gavin, is about the same weight as Parker. He's about five pounds heavier. And they've been practice partners for the past five years. That's awesome. And, and he always says, you know, we, we try to surround ourselves with people with a like mindset. Like, yep. we're not going to get better if we're going to surround ourselves with people that just want to sit at home and play video games. Or, and, and, and I think 
think that's really resonated on Parker where I want to work with people in the room that are going to push me a bit. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and we've been fortunate with that. And then even in the predator room, he's been so lucky to, you know, to have kids like Tristan D yep. to, like Shane Tormey, yep. you know, Sean Elliott, kids like that, that just have good work ethics that, that also they're older than him. Yep. You know, these are eighth and seventh graders. My, you know, Parker's a fifth grader, but these are kids that just like, they, they look out for him and they see him as one of them yeah. in, in the world of wrestling. And he kind of sees that, like, that's how you treat younger people. Like, yes. you know, and, and that's how he kind of like, we have some young guys like, you know, Francis Coppola, mm-hmm. you know, like, like, um, is, is some of the other younger ones that, yeah. and, and Parker looks at that like, yeah, like Arthur, yeah. you know, the like Teddy, Teddy, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, and he looks Teddy's at like, he's a great kid too, mm-hmm. by the way. We, we have such great young kids in hell. And, yeah. and Parker's like, he just, he doesn't even, like, he doesn't have to be told this. He just knows, it's like. Just innate. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I'm the older, like, not, I'm the role model, but, like, I got, you know, I'm including these kids. Like, he'll go roll around with Francis for a while. And, like, he's on the map. He's got, like, a really good intuition. And, you know, but that's yeah. back to, like, the kids being little mirrors. And this weekend, Mason, I, I said to Abby, Mason has a really good intuition because his cousin was, like, bombing this one hill. It was the. Basically, the family's on one street. Mason wasn't sure if they were allowed to go down this driveway. So he just, like, waited there and, like, asked me permission. And I, and I said to Abby, like, he's got such good, yeah. like, gut instincts that he just knows. And that's the same type of thing with Parker. Nobody has to tell him mm-hmm. to go over and roll with the little guys. Like, he remembers yeah. what it feels like See, to be a little guy. It's because of kids like that that my son's lucky. Whether it's <clears throat> Mace or Parker or Teddy, whether they're in... Uh, an RWC room or they're at Little Sharks or wherever they are. Let's say maybe Elite, whoever. Those kids go out of the way to, like, Teddy always goes out of the way to go up to Max. Mace, always. Nice. Mm-hmm. And Parker's a leader when he's around Max or Jack. He's yep. setting his, an example and a tone. He's not being that, you know, uh, rude older brother. He's, right. like, kind of guiding them and, and, like, being a bit of, he's setting the tone. He's being a leader. And Mace goes out of his way all the time. And a kid like Teddy that's got a little bit of age on on Max, he might not be the oldest in the room, but Teddy shows up, he works hard, and he goes out of his way to make younger kids feel comfortable, just like Mace that's amazing. does. That's yeah. amazing. It comes back to the community mentality, where yeah. these kids, they see each other as, like, this is part of yeah. my wolf pack. Yeah. yeah. You know, we look out for each other here. Like, they don't, they're maybe not thinking of it that way, but, but that's, like, what's naturally going it's on. It's instinctive like, yeah, to yeah. them. It yeah. is. It is, but that's why the one day I was talking to them, I'm like, you eighth graders got to be careful here because, like you were saying, little Francis is watching. Arthur's watching. Yeah. You guys are going to be over here acting real selfish, messing around the whole darn time. They're going to think that's acceptable, and they're going to send that same message up. Mm -hmm. But if you're helping that next guy up, you're leading by example. Parker's a good natural leader that, like I say, the leader doesn't have to be the guy yelling at everybody, but he's he's giving it his all. And, like, that stuff's contagious, too. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're running hard on every single sprint. Him and Tormi, I think, are one of the best groups in the room because they're both there to just get better, well, get you're after it. by example yep. at that point. No exactly. one has to tell you what to do. I, you were probably like that. I was. Yeah, I bet. You led by example. No one had to tell you to work hard. No, no. But, my, you know, my dad was a blue-collar, lunch pail guy. You, you yeah. didn't, I didn't know... You know, it, it scared me just like Mason with that intuition. Like, I was scared not to work hard. Like, I didn't yeah. want to get in trouble or, like, I didn't want to get yelled at by the coach where some of these new generation punks, they don't care, bro. Like, no. unless well, you tell them and make now. sure that they know the expectation. If you give them an inch, they're taking the whole yeah. five-mile reservoir. Because there's no consequences so, anymore. You're not yeah. allowed to yell at kids. You know, like, listen, you when I— You still can't wrestle. You could still, you know— Yeah, but kids don't have that fear. When I was right. a kid, I was deathly afraid to get the crap kicked out of me. Right, right, right. I knew if I fucked up, I was going was to— Yeah, I, I knew what was coming. Now there's really, like, no form of discipline. Like, my kid's six— but I pride myself on the fact that I've never hit my kid. I mean, I've tapped him in the head to get his attention. But mm-hmm. the the other day, he walks out of my, my closet with my belt in my hand, and he snaps it. Uh-huh. I've never once done this. I right, said, who right. taught you that? Papa. No, I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> I said, I said pop up. Well, that's a move that my pop up would bro, hit, you know? That's, I got Take that, that belt off, bro, baby. Bro, I heard the belt coming uh-huh. off. And then I got the warning. He snapped Boom. that bitch and I knew it was on. Yep. It was all out hide and seek. And I, I was know. doing my best not to get found. I know. But I've never done that to my kid, but he sees it on YouTube. He has no understanding the beatings I got. And he'll never understand it. So is he really afraid of consequence? I don't know. But I know he's like kind of afraid of me when I, I don't even have to yell. He's more that afraid. Grandparent love is special these days. My dad Bro, sees they get your to be different at the gym. Yeah. And they're both built the same. They're blue but now collar, they get to say guys yes. that are so loving with these kids. Yeah. They get to be soft now. Yep. You know, yep. like 
even in my with my dad's current health, he's soft with my kids. Oh, I can imagine. And he, he enjoys every minute of it. Like Saturday, he wanted to come to Max's scrimmage. Now, it was really cold. It wasn't the most conducive environment for him to come to. So I told my mom, let it warm up and we'll, we'll get him out there. Um, but it's different. You know, for me, he loved and supported me, but he had to be tough on me. Yeah. The grandkids, whether they were tough on you or not, that your parents, they get to just say yes mm. and love those yeah. kids no matter yeah. what. They don't have to and, discipline. And they have a really good appreciation for time and these yeah. moments. You know, yeah. they already saw their kids get yeah. into like, like their 40s, yeah. their, their late 30s. They know how precious these moments yeah, time are. Goes. Where we're kind of, I'm only been a dad for nine years, so I'm still kind of yeah. learning as I go. I, and I feel you like know? time is flying. It bro. is flying, it's man. It's definitely challenging for yeah. us. I mean, my, my, I'm lucky to say my parents never hit me. Both my parents were young, and, and, and I guess I was a good. Good, good enough, kid. Mm -hmm. I guess hit, I was but not. <laughs> but it, you know, we have to really be on our toes. Like it, the belt's not working. That's just not you know. Mm. So we constantly have to evaluate. It didn't work adapt. for me. And, and what adapt. am I doing? Is what I'm doing effective at parenting? Right. And is what I did yesterday going to you know give me the same result if I do the same thing next right. week for this? Yeah, yeah. These these kids are challenging. They are challenging. It's, I mean, it's their job as an to educator, keep us on our as toes. a coach, and as a parent, yeah. it's challenging. It's yep. different. You know, and there's no longer once like the belt's not going to solve all the problems. It's the like, belt's I solved, have, the belt solved no problems, literally, no, in my childhood. That's, that's, they thought at it all. <laughs> it solved none. I just knew what was coming. Right. It was, I had fear of the belt with my grandpa, but was never like exposed to it or anything. But yeah, oh, the I psychological aspect, and you know, I'm kind of going through it right now with Mason with like these V bucks, like they're like thirty dollars. So he's like, hey, can you get me a V-Bucks? And I'm like, dude, I just got you a headset. Yeah. I bought you $30 V-Bucks like two yeah, days no ago. Concept. What are we doing here? You know, so, but I'm like, you know, adapting as I go because we were best buds. He was my first kid. He yeah. changed my whole life. Like, mm -hmm. I just wanted to give him everything right. possible. And now 28 weeks later, talking with you guys over things, I'm like, damn, he needs challenges. Uh, he yeah. needs to overcome yeah. stuff. He needs to work towards goals. Like, because these kids are going to be adults one day and it's up to us. If we give them everything, they're going to think the world's going to hand them everything. Yeah. And we know damn well that that ain't the case. That's not life. You know? So we, we, we really do have to continue to adapt and I don't want them to think I'm a jerk. I still want them to love me, but I also know that real life is going to be a lot worse than I could ever want to be towards him. So I need to make sure that I'm molding him, you know, the best way that I can. And I think you guys do a good job with allowing other adults to be the voice and the expectation and, you know, give them guidance through so I know sports or a teacher. Or Max doesn't other want parents. to disappoint Coach Pete. Now, Max doesn't want to disappoint his father. But he also doesn't really listen to me. Like, yeah. in that sense, like Saturday yeah. at baseball, they went to kid pitch. So I told Max, I said, listen, the kid hasn't thrown a strike. When you get up to bat, <laughs> you don't have to swing the bat. <laughs> you will get on base. You will, will walk in four pitches. We swung at every pitch that was five <laughs> feet over our head Baseball's and five feet off the plate. dude. I didn't last long with baseball. Uh, but if Coach Pete was there to tell him, it's he'd have listened. Mm. So, like... There's real value in having another voice. I agree. Yeah. Whether right. I say listen to Coach Dave or Coach Pete or Coach Scott, he's going to listen. He's yeah. not going to listen to me. I'm coaching. So Parker was in the uh, youth state quarterfinals, and I'm sitting there with Steve Rivera, and like I'm not even saying anything because I yeah. figure no matter what I say, it's, he's only going to listen to it if it comes from Coach Steve. Yeah. And he does. And then uh -huh. the same thing. So so Jack makes it to the the tot state semifinals, and I'm sitting with Lou Riggi. And thank God I'm sitting with Lou Riggi. Like he. Lou's he, a great dude. Lou yeah. is the Jack Whisperer sometimes. I yeah. mean, there are two people that are Jack Whisperers. It is Frank Apola and Lou Riggi. Nice. Like, they, they they truly get him. So anyway, so Jack's winning 5 nothing after the first period, and it's our choice. So I tell Jack, we're going we're gonna to take neutral. And Jack's like, no. <laughs> and I'm he's like, and I look at Lou, and I'm like, he's like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, Jack, no, let's, let's go neutral. He goes, no, Dad. <laughs> He tells her, I'm taking top. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, Lou, you're in charge now. I can't coach my kid anymore. Yeah, and Lou's like, don't worry, I got this. So Jack takes top. He turns the kid twice. Nice. Blue, 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 cradle? No, he, I don't even, he like got a wrist to a half nice. and just muscled the kid over. But anyway, yeah, Jack, Jack's strong. Fucking tank. So strong, I, I turned it over to Lou and, and, and Jack ended up winning the match. He got hit in the throat, he, you know, but he won. And it was, from that point on, I was like, Lou, he is all yours. There you go. Because no matter what advice I give him, it's just, yeah. I'm still dad. Yeah, we see and, that And I football. think that was kind of like me, the passing of the torch. And, I, and I've done that really already with Parker. Like yeah. I am there for support. That's it. And he still wants me in his corner. And I love yeah, that he wants me in his amazing. corner. But I am here for support and I will validate what you want to do. That's it. You need to hear other voices he, coaching he battled you battled a lot that match because I remember when he got hit in the throat. I mean, it kind of that could have taken him out. Yeah, you know, 
not physically taking him out, but mentally yeah, that could have could have wore on him. Coach him through, and then I had Frank yeah. Apollo just give him the pep talk. I like we're gonna yeah. keep going. Like, and one thing I got to give Frank a ton of credit for. Frank is amazing at pep talks. Yeah. <laughs> he gives those Capola speeches are awesome, uh-huh. <laughs> and that's one thing I'm not really good at. It's like a motivational talk, but you need somebody hyped up. Frank will get him going. Yeah, yeah. But Lou. Lou solid it's, and it's that other voice like you know if you and I say the same thing to your kid he, he, he he's going to take it from me yeah he will it's the same thing to, with the high school age kids too yeah. You know? yeah surround yourself with good people and hopefully they give the same message to your kid yeah 100% that's what I hope absolutely alright I don't mean to cut this short no, this but I got good. kids that gotta go to the doctor was rolling, baby. and um guys I, I really appreciate you guys listening in this one was uh was a little special to me I've spent a lot of time with Dave he's watched my boy grow I've watched his boy grow um, and we've gotten pretty close it was important for me to get him on here after he mentioned that he would love to be a guest this was the first episode we filmed since he said that and we got him on as fast as possible because I respect Dave and his views so much so again thanks for tuning in like share subscribe we appreciate all the support as always any questions please click the link shoot an email and we'll answer you have a great day guys thank you thank you thanks for having me I didn't mean to cut it short no that was perfect